Hello everyone. Today we'll understand what we mean by excess burden of taxation. We all pay taxes in our day-to-day -day lives. Let's suppose I pay rupees 1000 as tax. Now the burden which is directly observable to me is rupees 1000. But in reality, the burden is more than rupees 1000. And that is what it is referred to as excess burden. So in this video, we will understand what we mean by excess burden of taxation. There are majorly two types of taxes, direct tax and indirect tax. Direct tax is paid when income is earned and indirect tax is paid when income is spent. So here we will understand excess burden under direct tax like income tax. The imposition of direct tax affects us in two ways. Firstly, it affects our net income. For example, earlier I earned rupees 100. Now tax is imposed at the rate of 10% per annum. My income will be reduced to rupees 90. Secondly, it affects our willingness to work. That is, the number of hours worked or supplied changes due to change in the net income. This relationship of income and the hours supplied is shown through the labor supply curve. This is a labor supply curve. It is upward sloping to the point where substitution effect dominates. That is, the, when the wages increases, the laborer or the worker supplies more hours and he substitutes leisure for work. When the wages reduces, he supplies less of hours. But after a certain point, when the wages increases, he he decides to supply less hours as he can earn the same income by working less hours. But in order to understand the excess burden of taxation, we take into account only the upward sloping labor supply curve. This is the labor supply curve. On the y axis, we have shown wages per hour, and on the x axis, we have shown the hours worked. Let's suppose that the worker was working, the worker was earning wage per hour W and he decides to supply, he decides to supply L hours of labor at OW wage rate. Now when a tax is imposed at the rate of T percent his wages reduces and let's suppose his wage reduces to W1. At this reduced wage rate, he decides to work less hours, that is L1 hours. Now the worker works for L1 hours. At this L1 hours, he, he still gets the wages equal to OW from the employer, that was the earlier wage rate, but has to pay WW1 as tax to the government. Hence, his net wage reduces to OW1 per hour. So the total wages that he got from the employer was OL1E2W minus tax revenue that he has to pay to the government, which is area equal to W1E1E2W and hence the net wage that he receives now is equal to O L1 E1 W1. Hence, this is the area W1 E1 E2 W is the area that he has to pay as tax revenue to the government. And this is the tax that is which is directly observable and we know about. But in reality, the tax or the burden that we feel is more than that. And so, Let's look at what that excess burden is. Before the imposition of the tax, the total wages were O L E W. That is O L E W. And we know that the supply curve also shows the marginal cost curve. That is the cost of the leisure time that he had to forego and had to work. So this area under the supply curve is shows the cost that he has to bear in terms of leisure forecast. So the total cost is O L E. The surplus, that is 
the total wages minus cost is equal to area O E W. O E W. This is the situation before tax. After tax, the total wages reduced to O L one E one W one. The total cost shown by the area under the supply curve is O L one E one surplus that is wages minus cost equals to the area O E one W one. Hence, before the imposition of tax, the surplus was the area O E W, and after tax, it reduces to O E one W one. Hence. The total loss suffered by the individual is W W one E one A. It has two components, out of which the area W W one E one E two is paid to the government as tax, but the area E one E two E is the additional loss suffered by the taxpayer, and this is the loss that is known as excess burden of taxation. The amount paid as tax changes hands from the worker to the government, but the amount equal to excess burden, that is E one E E two, does not change any hands and hand and hence is low. So hence we need to understand that excess burden is not only the personal loss borne by the taxpayer but also by the society, as no sum of money equal to the excess burden of taxation changes hands. That is, it is invisible. And a loss to society due to imposition of taxes. So here we conclude our topic. I hope you got a clear understanding of what the excess burden of taxation is and found this video useful. Thank you.